ladies and gentlemen, join us today as Mercedes Damritowski running for the Nebraska Senate to represent District 37. She says in honor on our website that the uh, voices of rural Nebraskans have been too long ignored. Mercedes, thank you so much for joining us today. I got I got to say, are there are there Nebraskans who, who are not rural? Is that a thing? Are there are there are there urban Nebraskans? There are. So one third of Nebraska's population lives east of 121st and Lincoln. <laughs> so the first district is pretty much Omaha. The second district is outside of Omaha and Lincoln and a little bit outside. And I live in the third district of Nebraska, which is pretty much the entire state. You're, you're, so. you're talking congressional districts, of course. Yeah, yeah, congressional. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Um, no, no. That's, so, that's yeah, an interesting way of describing it. But yeah, so you have a, a... There's a lot of rural land out here. And because it's so sparsely populated, we don't have a lot of weight. We have a lot of representation, but because of the population distribution, the bigger cities, like money-wise, get most of the taxes because of how everything's set up. And so, like, that's kind of like what's going on right now. The urban voices in Lincoln are starting to take over a little bit, and we feel kind of oppressed, repressed, but not by... It's, it's very complicated because we have the unicameral. So it's, we don't have like, we are very nonpartisan. It's one legislative branch. Um, so you, by, by unicameral, hold on, by unicameral, you mean you have a Senate, but you don't have a House. You have yes. one legislative yes. body in the state of Nebraska. Mm -hmm. So each Senator represents their district. So mine is 37, which is Kearney, Shelton, and Given, and the rural areas. And it's a very, very big rural area. Our county is pretty big. Um, I don't have a county map accessible right here, but um, it's a pretty big county and there's a lot of land. And so uh, the way that our state runs is kind of socialist in that aspect where we pool all the property taxes together and that's fun. that funds our education because Nebraskans are very big on education, like big, big, but the state controls it in a way where it's very localized as well. Nebraska is a very libertarian state, and most people don't realize it because we're a Republican state. So the right. Republican Home Party's of kind of... Ebke. I'm sorry? Home of Laura Epke. Home of Laura Epke, yes. Laura Epke and I, uh, she's my, one of my, my grown... I call her my grown-up libertarian. Uh, she's an adult. I call her an adult of the party. <laughs> she is just... <laughs> she's like one of the best people I've ever met. Uh, I met her officially at the Libertarian uh, Convention. We were fortunate enough to have our Libertarian Convention in February, and um, Joe Jorgensen was there, so I got to meet her, and that was really, really cool because it was a pre-convention cocktail party, and it was done in, like, um, Lady Lux uh, Speakeasy in downtown Lincoln is where we met. And so you go in down this alley, and there's a phone booth, and you pick up the phone, and they're like, what's the password? And you tell them the password. And so the password for the party was Libertarian. So then I go, they let you in this trap door, and you go in, and there's, like, a hallway, and there's a pool table in the bar. It's very 1920s themed. It was very cool. There's lots of alcohol consumed that night. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> yeah, now you're sounding really Nebraska Mercedes, but I want to go yeah. back to this this rural-urban divide, because mm -hmm. I, I never expected that this would be, like, an, an issue that I'm so passionate about. And I, I, it's not very often that I even get to articulate and address it directly. So, you know, I want to say thank you for this opportunity yeah. because I live super rural. Mm -hmm. I live down three miles of private dirt road, completely off grid. That and sounds so wonderful. It is. <laughs> for people who want to learn more, it's the Garden of Freedom. You can find thegardenoffreedom.com. Better to just okay. see our gallery on Instagram at the Garden of Freedom. Thanks for the, the, the opportunity to plug it there. But, you know, when, when I see this and, and the way you describe it politically, it, it's very tempting to get wonky and, yeah. and to talk policy. But step back for a second and you go, it's assholes coming together to gang up on everybody else. How do they come together? They come together in cities. Who do they work to screw over? People who don't live in cities. And it's it's a now I'm not saying that cities themselves are inherently bad or unethical, 
but very much tied to the current human experience with cities is that that's where assholes gather to take <laughs> advantage of everybody else. And when they create a policy that says, well, we're going to, we're going to, st- we're going to take from everybody and we're going to create this resource that's really important for everybody. Well, we're, but we're going to put it centrally located. We're going to put it in this, well, you're stealing from people in rural areas in a way that advantages city areas. And, and, and there are so many artificial ways through government that people are disadvantaged and thus incentivized to live packed into cities in inhumane condition. Exactly. And not only that, the, there was a prime example of the last three weeks of the Nebraska legislature have been... I'm going to be a millennial for a second. It's been freaking lit. There has been... Arnie Chambers has been popping off. He's been on the floor calling them racist to their face. He's been calling the governor a racist to his face. He is 80-year-old pissed off black man right now, and he has unleashed it all, and he's very smart. He's very articulate and literary, and he's been in there since 1971. Nebraska changed the Constitution so that they can term limit Ernie Chambers out because we didn't have term limits. They changed the Constitution so that he wouldn't be in office anymore. They changed the Constitution because his people keep kept voting him in, and they didn't want him in. There is some, there's wonky things going on in Nebraska right now. And not only that, but my own senator is a property owner here in town. He's a landlord. We're a college city. His properties are not very nice. Uh, no, I, I want to go back because you mentioned this guy, Ernie Chambers. Oh, and I'm, Ernie Chambers. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of surprised I haven't heard of him because <sighs> from, is, I, I just look at him up here. Words, In his own words, he is the alpha and the omega. He is one of, he is the longest serving representative in any body of legislature in American history. Yeah. And he was the first, and he was the first black elected official in North Omaha. North Omaha, Omaha is racist AF. North Omaha is a giant, like what my mom would refer to it as the ghetto. Um, like in in Nebraska, you're told North Omaha is very scary and dirty and all this stuff. Like er, my man, Ernie Chambers. Oh, I love him. <sighs> I love him so. Oh, much. I love this. I'm just, just <sighs> under the controversy section on his Wikipedia page. My ISIS is the police. Yes. On March 20, 2015, during a judiciary committee hearing on allowing guns in bars, Chambers said. My ISIS is the police. He said his comments were intended to criticize the failure to prosecute Alvin Lugod, the Omaha police officer who fatally shot Danny Elrod on February 23rd. Mm-hmm. Um, My wow, man. yeah. My yeah. man. So he's, I think he's Democrat registered technically, but he is like, he's a, he's a libertarian. He it is. says he's an independent. Okay, then yes, he, yeah, so... Libertarian Party in Nebraska gained ballot access per, I think permanently. I don't remember. Laura F. Key uh, secured ballot access for us in the state of Nebraska while she was in legislature. Thanks, Laura. Um, and so because of that, I'm a libertarian because I've been an independent. I was an independent. I mean, because of Nebraska's political structure, we have closed primaries, so if you want to vote in like the Republican or the Democratic primary, you have to be registered as a Democrat or a Republican to get that ballot. So you can switch your party at any time. Political parties don't really matter in Nebraska, which is nice. So, so yeah, I, I just want to I want to share one other thing about Ernie here. The mm-hmm. term limit law, since you mentioned that, I think deserves a little bit of explanation. In 2000, a term limit amendment was passed that essentially forced Chambers and half of Nebraska state senators out of office in 2008. The amendment required legislators to sit out one term after which they could run for re-election. In 2012, Chambers was once again elected to represent North Omaha's 11th district in the Nebraska unicameral, defeating Brenda Council by a landslide. He will be forced to sit out the 2020 election due to the same law. And I just, this this last thing, just to round out celebrating Ernie Chambers here. Chambers is a longtime civil rights activist and the most prominent and outspoken African-American leader in the state. He has been called the Maverick of Omaha and the angriest black man in Nebraska and has called himself a defender of the downtrodden. Maybe you can get him on the show for our next guest. But I I wanna go back to, to, you know, what this is, this is just fun background (laughs) 
for for what you're stepping into here, Mercedes, mm -hmm. because you know, getting to getting to work alongside someone like this is, oh, you know, it, it, it is yeah. I mean, just like dream come true kind <laughs> it of. It would be experience. an honor to meet him because I've met like I met Tom Osborne as a kid, like as as a child. I was kind of groomed for what I'm doing. Uh, my mom was a member of the chamber. She owned a business like Carney's very, it's a college town, it's very political. So like I was introduced, I was in a lot of different activities. So I was introduced to a lot of different people. Like I met Adrian Smith and I know I've met Tom Osborne and Tommy Frazier golfed at the golf course my uncle owned. And so there's just a lot of elitists in this area in which make political Nebraska interesting. <laughs> yeah, interesting to say. <laughs> so, what in terms of policy? You know, we talk about representing you know a, a rural uh, district against mm -hmm. some of the more urban uh, political interests in your state. What what are the priorities in that? Without getting too wonky, when you when you go and talk to constituents and you say. This is what we're going to change for you. It's what do you tell them? What's the priority? 15 seconds or less. Um, mental health access, medical access. Um, we have, we don't have a, we don't have enough mental health service access in our area, really. Um, also, the cost of living is outrageous in this area. Our property um, value was driven up because it, land value was driven up because agricultural land was driven up. So it's that trickle effect of since land outside of town so expensive and inflation has happened now landlords are charging more per square foot and the cost of the living is like no carney is a perfect petri dish for the capitalistic society our middle class doesn't exist anymore the average median income is very not like financially carney is very shop here buy here it's local it's very independent, kind of purplish politically. Um, so that's what I go after, first of all, is just that. And then the property taxes and um, that nature. But um, our education, we just had a brand new high school built and it was super expensive, but it's not big enough for all of our kids. Um, so there's just a lot of weird things going on right now that need addressed that our senator's not doing. And he was running unopposed, so. Now, just, one of the things, sorry? And, th and this is just all commonly, like, if I'm talking to a constituent, this is all already known. Like, we are, for the most part, we're really, we talk about politics, but our voter turnout, like, we had the highest voter turnout in, in the primary that we've had, I think, to date, if I remember correctly. Um, but we talk politics, but we don't have time to go politic because everybody's working three jobs because we're the perfect petri disc for a failing capitalistic society. So like all my friends have three jobs. It's uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, no, I mean, you, a lot going you, on. you gave me a, a campaign slogan. I feel like I had to write it down for for, for running uh, for twenty four for the presidential nomination again. Oh, it's like gosh. I I just want everyone to be rich. I just want like, everyone really, to be rich. I just want everyone to be rich. Like, there's, I, no I, why, why? there's no reason. There's no yeah. reason we can't. Like, everybody in America can't be rich. There, there's so much wealth and power just concentrated in the hands of a few unjustly. Corporations. And what we're What's that? It's corporations. It's all well, of it. It's just, we, I can't compete with Walmart. I can't compete with Walmart. Walmart shut, like, and our city, oh my gosh, our city is so beautiful in the government that it has because we are so localized and play here, stay here. We're a tourist town. Um, it took years and years and years and years to get a walmart here like we our city just would not approve a license for them they're like no we don't want you here we had three local grocery stores we had all of these local like we had a tailor shop downtown still and we had suits being made and we had all these nice small niche things that were thriving and then we let walmart in and bob superstores shut down and now we have a super target and we're growing and it's our small businesses are struggling and it's it's great it's fine. <laughs> so, well, the, the, the reason I'm, I'm glad you mentioned cost of living. Oh, yeah. It's outrageous that, here. Well, it's it's not just that, but it's like I, I want everyone to be rich. You know, yeah. and I, I don't think I don't think libertarians as a whole. We don't do this is one place I, I will say we have failed in in our messaging and in communicating what motivates us as as libertarians. And in, in, in terms of it's not because because. 
a lot of us are, are kind of autistic and we're really yeah. concerned about being right about everything. And we are right about everything. But aside yes, from that, you know, we're, we're not always good at communicating like Joe Jorgensen, our, our presidential nominee says, you know, we're selling the features of freedom, not the benefits. And, mm -hmm. and being able to sell the benefits to people is really important. And when we say, hey, taxation is theft, you know, we're not saying, hey, stop stealing from me because I don't want to be stolen from. Yes, that's part of it. But we're also pointing out very clearly, if sometimes only implicitly, look, this has been stolen from us. When something has been stolen, what does it mean to get justice? To take it the fuck back. <laughs> and to, Not to, just to, that. To, it's, it's, ta it's taxation without representation. I learned if you don't vote on the tax, then the tax shouldn't exist. There should no be no reason why I have an income tax and a state income tax coming out of my paycheck when I did not consent to that. I did not consent to all of my overtime being donated to the government and taxes. I did not consent to be bumped up to the next tax bracket because I'm a welder and I know how to do things with my hands. Why do you get to profit off of my sweat during the summertime, Uncle Sam? That's mine. I made that. How come it took me 10 years to stay in a hotel I built? Why? Yeah, yeah. no, Why? Liberals, are, uh, uh, liberals are all about consent uh, until it comes to taxes and vaccines. And then you see their hypocrisy revealed. No. But it's it, not you're, you <laughs> so passionate about this <laughs> <coughs> taxation is theft yeah no, so I, that, that you can break it down to your 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 constituents and say i mean I, I honestly talking about cost of living is is pretty tame in terms of the potential of what the libertarian message has for correcting the economic injustices of the world that we live in today. It is. You know, and and if, if we can just break it down and explain why they're happening and the chain effect they are, like cost of living is high. Why is cost of living high? Cost of living is high because of inflation. Why do we have inflation? Inflation started this round because of the price of gas back during Iraqi freedom when price of gas went from $2 a barrel to $99 a barrel. That affected price of transportation, which affects food, which affects cost of living. And then your businesses aren't making money, so it comes out of your benefits because they are not going to make not make money. But then now you have people who now need help because they can't survive. So then you have social programs. Then they go to the social programs. Well, that costs more money. So now we need more taxes to help these people who need more money. But if they just had $2 a gallon gas or a wage that actually reflected what they are worth, then we wouldn't have the stagnation of cost of wages and cost of living. But people don't break it down like that. They don't do that mental mental work to get to cause and effect. They don't know how to critical think. Well, the, the, the other challenge you're up against here is just how good quality of life is overall still for most Americans. It is. And I, I don't think enough of us appreciate how much of this is because we are citizens of the dollar empire, that yeah. because of the US military, because of the petrodollar, we are able to import a lot more value than we export. And yeah, you can argue those terms, blah, blah, blah. But regardless, quality of life is pretty good here. And a lot of it is based on the legacy of the American federal government stealing from other countries and using the violence of the military to leverage economic advantage against other countries. And already I'm like, ah, too wonky, too wonky, stop, stop, stop. Right, but that's that's the reality. That's, how like, it, that's what it is, and until we actually admit it and lay it out in a simple way, that's not super wonky. Um, people won't understand what's going on, and because the way we live has a price, we can't just keep taking in and not giving out. It's like I'm a big proponent of mental health. CJ and I have Mental Health Mondays now. We started doing on his show unofficially, officially on accident. It just, just. It just happened, man. Um, but it's just like the mental health. Like, you can try to save the world all you want, but if you're not taking care of yourself, it's not going to work. And the same thing is with government. The government's not here to take care of us. We need to take care of us because the government can't take care of us if we don't take care of it. And we're not taking care of it right now. We're just being moochers, 
weirdos sleeping on the neighbor's couch because we can't get our shit together. Can I have another 10 I bucks for some gas, please? I, yeah, this is like, I just want everyone to be rich. You know, like, I, I wish there was some way. I, 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 I hate to say that, like, let's apply the Trump strategy for your campaign or let's let's pretend like it's idiocracy for a while. Oh God, but in a sense, is. I want someone like you to just be able to connect with voters by saying, look, shit's fucked up. I Things say are that, being though. stolen from us. And I'm going to fight to stop the theft and take as much back mm -hmm. for you as possible. See, I used to Done. wait tables. I used to wait tables. I waited tables during the last presidential election. Um, <laughs> that's great. That was so fun. Let me just tell you. It was fantastic. <laughs> huh? um, and I, okay, so like I live in Kearney. And Kearney's smack dab in the middle of Nebraska on I-80. We are on the interstate. If you've ever been through on the interstate through Nebraska, it takes an eternity, an eternity to get through Nebraska. But we have like this archway and it's a tourist trap. It's beautiful. And we're also the crane capital of the world because of the crane migration and how they do it. And it's all very cool and stuff. We're hippies here. It's great. Um, but we get, we would get people traveling through during the last election. And I will say that Bernie bros do not tip as well as Trump supporters did. Just throwing that out there as a server. Trump supporters yeah. don't tip better. And I did not support Trump. So that was like great for me. <laughs> All right. So you, you also on, uh, you're also the vice chair of the Tri-Cities Libertarian the, Party of Nebraska. Is that correct? I am. I am. Yes. So what's that been like being involved in the party there oh. and to, to, how, how critical is that uh, to, to have their support behind you in this race? Mm, you know, we're also united anyway within our state party. Like, even though, like, let me explain this. Our state party here in Nebraska is very diverse. And um, as far as ideology goes, like we have our echo chamber like every state does, but as far as like the affiliates and the state party, we all work together to try to help our candidates out and try to get our message out and door knock. Like our chair, uh, Jared and his wife, Amy, are both super involved. They come to all of our affiliate meetings. I chaired the last, not last one, two meetings ago I chaired, maybe three. It was as soon as we could get back together. Um, from the mandates being lifted and they came down and they they are always at our meetings they're so involved um i've met i think almost everybody in our state party that's actually active and, and involved but um so like we did the joe jorgensen uh letter speak convoy i hosted that here in carney for the trace cities and um, we hosted it here in town and it wasn't a very good turnout and that's expected because you know all this shit going on. Uh, there are people. Are, are, that, people, in, are, oh, wait, wait, are people in Nebraska uh, still scared of, with, with Corona? Is that something that's like a challenge for you campaigning? Uh, yes, it is. Um, mostly because in our area we have, and I wasn't supposed to talk about this, by the way. My campaign manager told me not to, but this is important. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm an anarchist. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I believe in science okay okay point blank um i live in an area in which there are a lot of meat packing plants and a hispanic population my dad's from mexico hi <laughs> i is mulatto i do not speak spanish my mom raised me it's a very interesting situation but because of the meat packing plants and the way this virus is working it it attacked our meat packing population because they didn't do anything they didn't say it was contagious they said if you could go to work with it that it's fine and so enough people got sick that it actually put pressure on our healthcare system and we're having a spike right now again that's going to be even bigger than the last one so there's lincoln and grand island have meat packing plants that are owned by jbs swift and the government's actually looking into the working conditions of the meat packing plant employees because of the number of cases in these meat packing plants it was a covid bomb basically in these places everybody got sick all at once people died uh senator vargas um nebraska senator vargas his dad died um so we are in a spike right now because our governor has not our governor's been very libertarian he said you guys are on your own it's down to local 
you're gonna, it's your local um, health um, districts and your school districts you guys figured out for kids. Um, we're not going to mandate masks. We're not going to give you care acts money. We're going to put that in a trust fund for property tax relief. That happened. Um, <laughs> yeah, that happened. There's a lot of fuckery going on right now. And um, COVID is a real threat here because it, it is a virus. And the reason why we wanted to slow the spread was because everybody gets sick at once. You have... 115 ventilators and you have 300 people that need a ventilator within the and it takes two to three weeks to get off a ventilator you don't get a ventilator it's nature takes its course at that point so the emotional psychological impact of this virus is going to be very well seen here in nebraska and people are are paranoid about it when you're campaigning you campaign no it's more me too. It's more me taking precaution. Um, I'm asthmatic. Uh, my grandma is on oxygen. My mom <clears> had COVID and still has inflammation in her lungs. Um, I'm sick right now. It's the second time this year I've been sick. The first time we thought I had COVID, but because of the CDC recommendations and restrictions on testing, I wasn't allowed to be tested within the time frame. I would have been positive. And so until I had contact with my friend who's in the army who just got back from South Korea who got tested there but came here instead of quarantining, then I got tested, but it had already been three weeks since I had been sick initially. And I did, caught did it. Your test include did your test include an antibodies test? No, it was it was at the very beginning. It was at the very beginning. Um, they did my daughter, it just turned to Sunday. They did her and me. Both of our tests were negative. It took eleven days to get our results. Um, they did two test series, so they do a full panel and the test sample first, and then they send it off for testing. So it's already been tested and diluted at that point. So the testing and how the government's handling this in our area is very, I mean, there's propaganda everywhere, but so our healthcare professionals have just been diagnosing based off of symptoms and treating per symptom, which is why our mortality rate is so low and why people aren't going on vents like they have been. Because instead yeah. of just following what people are saying to do, they're diagnosing based off of symptoms. But the treatment yeah. I had the first time uh, followed the COVID recommendation being I'm asthmatic. That's how we treat everything anyway, because anything I get goes to my lungs. This time, like right now, I can barely taste and I can't smell. I lost that a few days ago, and but I've been sick for the last like three COVID. weeks. Mm -hmm. And I've been sick for the last few weeks. Um, like I'm sweaty, my palms are sweaty, I'm getting hot flashes. My nose was runny, headache. My mother-in-law has a heart problem. She's been exposed. The prep, she works at a bank. There's employees there that were in ICU. <laughs> and that's a small town. Minden has like 2,700 people. And they got it at the country club. So I, I, I only have one bone to pick with you with all that you said there, although we could be debating <laughs> COVID for, for hours. Oh, but when you, say, when, when you say that the... Uh, the, the governor has been libertarian it's not really fair like it's, if if i if i if i think about goodwill hunting right when he talks about his dad beating him oh i'm yeah. gonna give you a choice i'll let you you can choose the belt or the or the stick or yeah. the rent for yeah, me the, to beat you with what do you want he said i, I chose the, i always chose the wrench because fuck him you know yeah. like, when, that, it's not libertarian to give someone a choice of who to be beaten by yeah and that's when true you're saying hand it over to these existing political entities these exist this existing corporate establishment that government created in the first place you can't say that that's being libertarian well, right you have to get into how our school systems are set up though because if you leave the decision to close schools to your city in your district yeah. and they're monitoring it and they base it off the safety of the children and if parents can work like because our main goal in nebraska is keep kids safe that's 100% is school and keeping kids safe. So if they base it off of the school system and what the risk would be for the children to go to school being as our schools are overcrowded, remember, uh, then we can base that and keep parents home because of how rural we are. Um, but then there comes in the people are making money and then you get into all that problems which is happening anyway before this, and it's just a compound problem. And he's being libertarian in the sense of he's not Governor Cuomo 
or anybody else who's mandating we shut down, businesses are closed. They did directive health measures and said, hey, if you can't stay six feet apart or whatever, like it's probably a good idea to shut down. Like my friend works at a hair salon and their business, <laughs> a hair salon that's owned by the senator I'm running against. <laughs> Anyway, Sorry. so they sh they shut down because she they couldn't safely do their job. She got a road crew job. She worked road construction all summer. Because you have a part time legislature. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because we only get paid twelve hundred dollars a year to legislate in Nebraska because we're farmers. It's based on the principle of we are all farmers. We're busy. <laughs> we got other things to do besides politics. I hope you don't lose that because that is the mm. you know, one. One of my favorite weird footnotes in American political history, <coughs> excuse me, is that you can trace the growth of the federal government, its, its uptick, to the invention of one device. The telephone. Oh, goodness. Air conditioning. Oh, because it wasn't uncomfortable to work inside all day and it felt better, so now people have more things to do. The D.C. Capitol is a fucking swamp. When Trump says drain the swamp, there's He's a lot of good, good. I mean, he became it. He's the oh, biggest no. swamp monster that's what there I, is. Oh, my but, gosh. That's what I keep telling people is I do not like Donald J. Trump. No, I've never liked him in the history of my life, even when he was going, you fired. No. He's a giant turd <laughs> sandwich. Okay? Okay. Full stop. And then, he but is he's a like... Giant dish. I he's don't the know what he, and he's, Biden is the giant douche. Can't they yeah. both be both? Yes, it's interchangeable. Anyway, so he's like, I'm going to go drain the swamp. And then I'm like, this motherfucker, he might just do it. And then I see it happening as destructful <laughs> as possible. And I'm like, he's actually doing it. He's going down with it, but he's actually doing it. He's taking one for the team. This <laughs> motherfucker. God damn it. Because I don't want to like him. I don't want to like him. I don't want to like him. And then he's like, here's some crumbs while you eat your cake. Here's crumbs. Here. But actually, a senator has said that on the floor in Nebraska during the legislature. She said, we have COVID going on and all these, the government is causing all these problems and we have the opportunity to fix it with these monies that they gave us and instead you're telling your constituents to eat cake. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> she went I there. You know, Mercedes, it is such an interesting time. You know, may you be blessed <laughs> to live in interesting times, right? Maybe that's a curse. Uh -huh. But I, I really do think, you know, Trump plus Corona, not 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 either by themselves, but now that we have Trump plus Corona, like a lot of people said that when Trump got elected, we entered into an American political dystopia. Oh God, we did. We're in a George Orwellian. I mean, we were already in an Orwellian dystopia, but now it's like got the Red Dawn vibe to it. And with, I'm not with, about this. With Trump, <laughs> with Trump and Corona, mm. it's it's a bad reality tragedy cartoonish dystopian TV show. Yeah. And, you know, I, that's why I, I enjoy talking to someone like you who can. You know, tell it like it is, and is you're you're doing something really cool right now. I am excited you. about your race. I I'm think trying. this has a lot of cool potential. <laughs> the idea of you and Ernie Chambers. No, but he's you know, out. He's out. Out for this session, right? He's eighty. Well, he's not coming back. I don't think he is. Well, then all the more reason <laughs> for we yeah. To place him well, and that's just with it, someone is, is spirited. We and that's just it is um, we. <laughs> I say this because I'm trying to be nice about it. Uh, I get my crazy laugh out for this part. So the state legislature passed an unconstitutional abortion ban. Like it's been ruled unconstitutional by the state, le like the federal government, like the conservative Supreme Justices already this year. Uh, <clears throat> and it failed, it passed by one vote. So uh, yes, I need to win now. I yeah. don't want to. I mean, I do, but I don't. But I do. I do. I'm, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't want to do it because my 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 kid needs me. That's what this is. My daughter. Oh, and my daughter yeah. needs me. Mommy needs to go to work now. Okay. Okay. Uh, but that's what I mean is. Yeah. So it, actually, it, so my husband and I are blessed enough to be able to own our own home. He has a lot of white privilege. 
a lot of it. That's what the Damertowski is. A hey! fun fact: Matthew's grandpa, Harold Damertowski, invented the dam gate on gravitational irrigation. So you know when the farmers go out and they pop open the thing for the irrigation, he invented that. Yeah, I know all about that. Okay, yeah, you so don't, but saying... anybody else watching does. <laughs> So, okay, all of your constituents know exactly what you're talking they about. They do, that's though. That's the thing. It's redneck royalty. It's stupid. <laughs> no, no. It's, well, no, it's not It's not stupid. I mean, we say redneck royalty. And, you know, there it's are, true. There's it's plenty true. of stupidity wrapped up you could wrap up and pack into the, the, the umbrella area covered by that term. But when you're celebrating someone for meaningfully contributing to mm -hmm. productive Americans being able to be productive, that that's, mm -hmm. that's he was a genius. What, what's 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 the what's the alternative for 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 celebrity royalty in America? Joe Biden, Michelle Obama, like really Anthony Weiner. Hey, really, <gasps> speaking Donald of Trump, oh my like, gosh, Anthony Weiner. Yeah, you know, I mean, I could keep going. Uh, there's so many like real like that's the, oh, no like no. let's celebrate the Damrotowski who invented the whatever the thing it was that, that it's, called the, the, it's, yeah, it's that, called the dam that, gate it's it's called the dam gate because it's Damrotowski yeah. it's the dam gate <laughs> all right so Mercedes I got I got a level one final criticism here mainly against your parents they spelled your name wrong for those of you I want to make it I want to I want to make sure that everybody who's watching this video remembers how to spell your name. Thanks, they don't Mom. It's like the car, it's Mercadize. Mercadize. M e r c a d i e s. What's the funniest way you've heard it mispronounced? Um. Oh God. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> okay, so like, okay, so so in in um, Japanese or Asian language, it's Mercadies because it's per syllable. So Mercadies is probably the coolest way I've heard it said. Because they don't understand my name unless I say it like that. Right. All right. And then, um, but I'd say Mercades. Mercades. But that's Mercades. that's kind of what it looks like. That's the look. That's the Mercades. Yeah. The, but it's not. It's Mercedes. Thanks. Visible pronunciation. So I want to I want to point this out, especially underscore it because your website is vote Mercades. Mercadize, votemercadize.com. Now you won't forget it. Votemercadize.com. Hey, it's me. Go, go check out Mercedes. There's her, her beautiful portrait mm -hmm. on the website. And I love that you have a link at the bottom there to the Libertarian Party website as well, yep. helping Braskins realize just how libertarian they are. Mercedes, oh, yeah. any, any final thoughts, things you want to share with your constituents and, and libertarians and why they should support this campaign? Um. Basically that I want to support you and your choice. It's your voice and it's your choice. And you need to remember that you are the power and that we need to be aware of where we live and how we function as a society and be more active in it so that we can have a better future for our children. Well said. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, and go to votemercedes.com because I do actually need money now. I hate that part of this. This is my least favorite part, but I do need... Some donations. I have some great people that I'd like to at least give something to. Um, and I need to go door knock and things, which means I need to pay for literature. Because, unfortunately, I don't live in the world I want to live in. And everything needs monies. Thank you for coming awesome. to my TED Talk. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Mercedes.